In Alhamdulillah, certainly our praise belongs to Allah and Ahmaduhu. We praise Him when Asta'inuhu. We seek His assistance when Astaghfiru. We ask His forgiveness. When A'udhu Billahi min shururi anfusina. And we seek the refuge of Allah from the evils of ourselves. Wa min sayyati a'malina. And from the ill consequences of our deeds. May Yahdihillah fala mudillala. Whomever Allah guides and none can set us straight. وَمَنْ يُضْلِلْ فَلَا هَادِيَ لَهُ And whomever Allah sets us straight, then none else can guide. أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ I bear witness that nothing deserves worship other than Allah وَحْدَهُ He is alone in that right, لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ And He has no partner. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ And I bear witness that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is the slave, the worshipper, and the prophet messenger of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise his rank and his mention and his status and grant him peace and blessings. Thumma amma ba'du. As for what follows, it was collected by Al Imam Muslim with an authentic chain of transmission to, Abdu, to Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. And likewise, it was collected by Imam Ahmed in his Musnad that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لَمَّا صَوَّرَ اللَّهُ آدَمَ فِي الْجَنَّةِ تَرَكَهُ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَتْرُكَ And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the surah of Adam in the Jannah, the outer body of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam in the paradise before a soul was placed into a meaning. تَرَكَهُ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَتْرُكَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left him meaning as a body without a soul, so long as he will to leave him. فَجَعَلَ إِبْلِيسَ يَطْوِفُ بِهِ يَنْظُرُ إِلَيْهِ And that caused Iblis to circle around Adam and to look carefully at Adam. فَلَمَّا رَاهُ أَجْوَفْ When he saw that Adam was أَجْوَفْ When he saw the hollow parts of Adam, the scholars they say when he saw the jawf of Adam, when he saw the stomach of Adam, he said in the wording of Imam Ahmed, he said, bihi. He said, I have already beaten him. Because this is a creature that cannot control himself. This is a creature that will not be able to control himself. Meaning that because he has haja ila ta'ami wa sharab, because he has such a need of food and drink. Because he has these sorts of impulses, because he has desires, as opposed to the angels who Allah wa Ta'ala created without a need of food and drink and the likes of this, and opposed to the jinn who Allah wa Ta'ala created from fire. As the scholars they say that it is understood from this hadith that this is mean khususiyat al bashar, and that this way that human beings are put together is from the things that make human beings unique and separate them and distinguish them from the jinn kind and from the world of the malaika from the species of angels when he saw the jof of adam qala the firtu bihi he said i have beaten him already khalqun la yatamalak he's a creature that cannot control himself meaning as regards his desires and as regards his impulses, and as regards his anger, and as regards his becoming thaqil, yathqulu an ta'ah, and as regards becoming heavy from overeating, and having complacency, and having laziness, and not wanting to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because a person is fatigued from eating too much. And the likes of these meanings, khalqun la yatamalak. When the shaitan saw that from the human being, before Adam had a soul, he knew that he could destroy the human race. إِلَّا مَنْ شَاءَ رَبُّهُمْ Except for those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exempted from his plan. For this reason, the shaitan, he said, كَمَا حَكَ اللَّهُ عَنْ As Allah tabarak wa ta'ala conveyed about the incident, the haditha, the incident that transpired in the heavens. When Iblis refused to make sajda, 
out of respect and out of honor for Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, and recognition of the fact that Allah had honored Adam over the rest of man, over, over the rest of the creation. He had honored mankind over the rest of the creation. And he had endowed him with knowledge. And this is what separated mankind, his ability to learn, and his ability to implement that knowledge, and his, ab his, and his ability to desire the good beyond the rest of the creation, and understand that good beyond the rest of the creation. And so when Iblis refused to make sajda for Adam, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala rebuked him. And he said to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي Then because you have set me astray, لَأَقْعُدَنَّ لَهُمْ صِرَاتَكَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Then I will wait in ambush for them upon your straight path. ثُمَّ لَأَتِيَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ وَعَنْ آيْمَانِهِمْ وَعَنْ شَمَائِلِهِمْ And then I will approach them. Furthermore, I will approach them from in front of them and from behind them. Meaning that I will beautify this world to them. And I will encourage them to forget the hereafter. وَعَنْ أَيْمَانِهِمْ وَعَنْ شَمَائِلِهِمْ and I will attack them from the right side and from the left side. The right side meaning as regards the acts of worship. And that which is written by the angels that are on the right side. I will attack them from their right sides. I will discourage them from believing in you. I will discourage them from obeying you. And I will attack them from their left sides. Meaning I will beautify to them sin and disobedience. I will cause them to love this world in a way that they forget about Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. As was stated by some of the Imams of the Salaf. That they said, That the love of this world is the chief cause of every sin and disobedience. I will come to them from their left sides. I will beautify sin and disobedience for them. And these are the most destroyed of Allah's creation. And you will not find the majority of them are grateful to you, O Allah. You will not find that the majority of them are grateful to you. Ayyuha al-Muslim, we heard last week the tafsir of Abdullah ibn Abbas, or the tafsir of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, where he said about the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the definition of a taqwa, an yudhkara fara yunsa, wa yushkara fara yukfara, wa yuta' fara yu'sa. It is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he is remembered and not forgotten. And that he has shown gratitude and he has not shown ingratitude. And that he has obeyed and he has not disobeyed. We are on the heels of Ramadan. Ramadan is right in front of us. And it is a month of a taqwa. It is a month that a person remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a month that a person increases in gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a month that a person increases in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a month that a person takes the greatest means at his disposal, which is a dhikr wa shukr, to remember Allah and to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the greatest weapons that he has at his disposal to wage war against the shaitan, to wage war against this avowed enemy of his. It is a time where a person deprives and withholds, his, and withholds the desires from his body that his body wants in order to give his soul what his soul needs. It is a time that a person directs himself to the book of Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, which is the greatest form of dhikr. As was stated by some of the scholars in the early generations of Islam, that the greatest way that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is mentioned, bi kalamihi, is by his speech, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The person who wants to protect himself by remembering Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَلِيَذْكُ رَبَّهُ bi kalamihi. Then let him mention his... Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the speech of his Lord, with the words of his Lord. As was said by Uthman ibn Affan, radiallahu anhu wa aradahu, that he said al-farqu, bayna kalam al-makhluq, wa kalam al-khaliq, kal-farqi bayna al-khaliq wa al-makhluq, that the difference between the speech of the Creator and the speech of the creation is like the difference between the Creator and the creation. It was said by Awn ibn Abdullah, رضي الله عنه ورحمه الله تعالى from the imams of the latter tabi'een from the people of al-kufa that he said may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon him dhikrullahi dawa'un wa dhikrullahi da'un wa dhikrun nasi da'un that remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a cure for all that troubles the people 
and remembering and mentioning the people and talking about the people. It is a disease. It is a disease. The people, they find themselves preoccupied with worrying about other people and worrying about the problems of other people. They find themselves worrying about everything except their own soul, worrying about politics, worrying about the economy, worrying about everything except for the salvation of their own soul, except for the salvation of their families. And this is a sickness. It is an illness. You find the people thinking about يَتَّبِعُونَ عَوْرَاتِ nas, Pursuing and looking for the flaws of the people and the mistakes of the people. Feeling good to see their brother or their sister slip in Islam. Feeling good to see other people falling into sin and disobedience so that they can feel as though they are not so awkward and they are not so odd and their situation is not so bad. Thinking that this is something that is normal and this is something that is the regular case. And so if everyone else is upon such disobedience, then what hope is there for me? And what makes me any different? And so the people they mention, it is faqihatul lisan. It is that which is sweet and delectable to the tongues of the people, to mention the faults of the people, and to mention the flaws of the people, and to rejoice in that. Shamatul ada, yani with the gloating that is like the gloating of an enemy over the slips and the falls of the people. وَلَا يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا And they don't mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except for very little. And the shaitan has had his way with them. And everything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned in their home. And their home is like a graveyard. And their home is a house full of sick or dead souls. نَسْأَلُ اللَّهَ السَّلَامَةَ وَالْعَافِيَةِ Ramadan is a time to change that. It is a time for a person to withhold from falsehood in his statements. And falsehood in his actions. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, مَنْ لَمْ يَدْعَ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ وَالْجَهَلِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةً فِي أَنْ يَدْعَ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَةً The person who does not leave off falsehood in his statements, and falsehood in his actions, and ignorance in his behavior, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no need of him leaving off his food and his drink. This is what a person is forbidden from all throughout the year. And in the month of Ramadan, his food and his drink and intercourse with his wife is forbidden during the daytime. It is forbidden during the daytime. And that which is awla wa ahra bit tarq, that which is most important and most, that which is most important and most urgent for him to leave off, which is sin and disobedience that is forbidden 365 days out of the year, 24 hours in the day, seven days a week, must be left off even more importantly. It must be abandoned even more importantly. The person, if he doesn't leave that off, if he doesn't leave off falsehood in his statements, and falsehood in his actions, وَمَا أَكْثَرَهُ And how frequent and how regular is that amongst us? And if he doesn't leave off ignorance in his character, and ignorance in his behavior, and in his treatment of others, in a time where Islam is being stigmatized, and the Muslim is portrayed as a villain, and the Muslim is portrayed as a threat, and the only Muslim that a person may come across may be you, and nearly 70% of the people in this country have never had a conversation with another Muslim, let alone, let alone personally know another Muslim. And the only contact that they come across as regards Islam and as regards how a Muslim should be is you, and you have the nerve to be ignorant in your behavior. The person who doesn't leave off that in his statements and his actions, and ignorance in his behavior. Allah has no need of him leaving off his food and his drink. It is a time for the person to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He said, فَذْكُرُونِ أَذْكُرْكُمْ وَاشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ Remember me and I will remember you. Remember me, mention me and I will mention you. The scholars they say, meaning that the person who remembers Allah and that motivates something good within his behavior, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يَذْكُرُهُ بِالْخَيْرِ وَالثَّنَاءِ وَالثَّوَابِ that Allah will mention that person with goodness and reward. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will praise that person in front of the angels. And the person who remembers Allah with his tongue while his heart, he remembers Allah with his tongue while his heart is not motivated. And while his heart is not changed. And while his behavior is not affected by what he knows about Allah. 
تبارك وتعالى يذكره الله بالذم أو باللعنة أو بالعقاب that Allah تبارك وتعالى despite the fact that this person he plays lip service to Islam despite the fact that this person claims to be a Muslim despite the fact that this person claims to respect Allah and venerate Allah تبارك وتعالى that Allah تبارك وتعالى will mention him with criticism and Allah تبارك وتعالى may mention him with his curses and Allah تبارك وتعالى may mention that person as a recipient of his punishment in this world and the hereafter. Allah تبارك وتعالى said, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ Mention me and I will mention you. وَاشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ And show gratitude to me and do not show ingratitude to me. A person when he feels hunger, when he feels hunger, every day that he feels hunger, when he feels fatigue, every day that he feels fatigue, and he remembers the plight of the poor and the downtrodden, and he remembers his situation and his dire need of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala to provide for him. And the had a nabban for Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he will feel this consistently, and he will feel this constantly, and it will be a feeling that does not lead from him. And he remembers the way of the prophets and the messengers, and the sacrifices that they made in the path of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, and how they were boycotted. They were boycotted because of their love of Allah and their love of this religion. And because of their spreading of this religion without fearing the blame of the blamers, to the point that they had to chew the bark off the trees and eat the leaves off the trees, and they couldn't find food to eat. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said that he remembered a time that a number of months passed and there was no food that they had to eat. Except for a small portion of food that Bilal had to smuggle under his armpit. Radiallahu anhu wa aradahu wa sallallahu ala nabiyina. And he remembers, and he remembers, and al asra, and al faqra asra ila man yuhibbun nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mina sayli ila muntahahu. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Kaab ibn Ujra, when Kaab ibn Ujra he said, Ya Rasulullah, inni la, wallahi inni la uhibbuk. O Messenger of Allah, by Allah I love you. By Allah I love you. He said, oh Allah, he said, by Allah you love me. Tuhibbuni ya Kaab. He said, Naam. Bala ya Rasulullah. Of course, O Messenger of Allah. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I'lam. He said, No, that poverty rushes quicker to the person who loves me than the flood water rushes to his further's banks. This is the reality. It is not always the case. But it is sometimes the case that a person must sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a way. And he looks at this situation. And he says that he has 30 days to learn this lesson. He has 30 days to learn how to be more grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the many favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he goes into the supermarket and he is fasting, the colors of the food jump out at him. When he breaks his fast at the end of the day, the sweetness of the water is something he can taste that he can't taste outside of Ramadan. The deliciousness of the food is something that he can taste outside of what? Beyond what he can taste outside of Ramadan. This is something that is tremendous for him. And he feels the restoration of his energy. He feels the restoration of his strength when he breaks his fast. And this is farah for him. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, وَلِلْصَائِمِ farhatan." That the sa'im has two. The fasting person has two instances of joy. Farhatan. And he has a farha. He has an instance of joy when he breaks his fast. And he will have another instance of joy when he meets his Lord. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillahi wahda wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala man la nabiyya ba'da wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated fasting upon us so that we could be of the people of taqwa. So that we, we, we could be of those people that mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in an increased fashion. And be of those people who are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those people that are not ungrateful to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those people who are thankful and those people who are not ingrate. Those people who are not kunud. And who mention all of their problems and they forget the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated this fast for the purpose of a taqwa. So we could be of those who obey Him and do not disobey Him. This is something that will protect us from every chaos in this world and the hereafter. Ayyuhal Muslim. They went to one of the scholars in the second generation in the time of the tabi'een. During the fitna of Ibn al-Ash'ath. When the Muslims, some of the Muslims were fighting amongst each other. 
And there was bloodshed among some of the Muslims. And they said to Talq ibn Habib, O oh, Sina, they said, give us some advice. Give us some advice on how to deal with the chaos, how to protect ourselves from destruction, how to protect ourselves from falling into the fitna and shedding the blood of other Muslims, shedding wrongful blood and the likes of these things. He said, taqwa taqwa. He said, shield yourself from fitna by having taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shield yourself from chaos, from fitna, from calamities. Shield yourself from such a trial by having taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They said, وَمَا تَفْسِيرُ They said, what do you mean exactly? What is the exact definition of a taqwa? And he gave a definition that Shaykh al-Islam, Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala wrote an entire book about. It's called al risala to tabukiya And in advice that he gave to the people of Tabuk, and in the borders of modern day Saudi Arabia. And he said, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon him. That this tafsir of a taqwa is the greatest and most comprehensive tafsir of the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of what it means to behave in such a way that you protect yourself from the anger and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that will guarantee your safety. When he said, أَن تَعْمَلَ بِطَاعَةِ اللَّهِ عَلَى نُورٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ تَرْجُ ثَوَابَ اللَّهِ It is that you act upon obedience to Allah, upon a life from Allah, تَرْجُ ثَوَابَ اللَّهِ Hoping for the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَن تَتْرُكَ مَعَاسِ اللَّهِ عَلَى نُورٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ تَخَافُ عِقَابَ اللَّهِ And it is that you abandon disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being upon a light from Allah, meaning upon faith and guidance and knowledge, تَخَافُ عِقَابَ اللَّهِ and he fearing the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa is iman wa ihtisab. Is that a person acts in obedience to Allah and leaves off disobedience to Allah because of nur min Allah, because of the light that Allah has given him, which is the light of guidance, the light of iman, the light of faith, the greatest blessing on the face of the earth. What he knows about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the last day is what compels him to do what he does. It is inexplicable. It is something that many people cannot understand. Why he is how he is. Why he does what he does. What compels him, what forces him. And when he tells them, and when they find out from him, they think that he is a fool. Because they disbelieve in the unseen. And because they disbelieve in the hereafter. And because they disbelieve in the greatness of the one that created everything. Tabarak wa ta'ala. And because Allah tabarak wa ta'ala lam yurid lahum khayra. Has not yet wanted good for such a person. And that person has abandoned goodness and Allah tabarak wa ta'ala left them to what they chose for their self. While this person is upon guidance. And when he tells them that he does what he does, that he withholds from what he withholds from, what he withholds from and that he does what he does because of guidance from Allah and because of belief in Allah on the last day, they think that there is something wrong with his mind. They think that there is something wrong with his mind. And he says that he does what he does out of faith, belief in Allah, light from Allah, Tabarak wa ta'ala, hoping for Allah's reward and fearing the punishment of Allah. Tabarak wa ta'ala. This is the reality the scholars they say of what was mentioned by the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These two things that a person acts upon faith, upon correct beliefs, that he is compelled by aqeedah, sahiha, salima, by a genuine, wholesome, correct creed about Allah on the last day. And that he submits in such a way that he is mindful of his reckoning with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That these two things are what was mentioned by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانْ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ That the person who fasts Ramadan because of these two things, because of faith and because of seeking a good reckoning with Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, he hopes for the reward of Allah. Fears the punishment of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. He fasts because of his faith, because of his belief about Allah, his belief about the angels, his belief about the paradise, his belief about the fire, his belief about the world of the unseen, his belief about the reality of the shaitan and the plots of the shaitan and the vulnerability that the shaitan exposes all throughout the year, going right through the stomach of a person. Exposing his love of this world and his desire for this world. He understands he has this type of faith, this belief in the unseen. And this compels him. And it has the result of al-ihtisab. And he is mindful of his reckoning with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
the person who fasts Ramadan like that, غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ He will have all of his previous sins forgiven for him. May Allah make us from them. وَمَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانْ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ And the person who stands in prayer in the night in Ramadan out of faith and out of seeking a good reckoning with Allah, then Allah will forgive his previous sins. وَمَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ And the person who stands up in the night of decree, in the last ten nights of Ramadan, out of faith and seeking the reward of Allah, then Allah will forgive his previous sins for him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask Allah and you balighana Ramadan, to allow us to reach the month of Ramadan in a state of aman and iman, wa salamati wal islam, in a state of faith and security and safety and submission. هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد